Good day and welcome back to another World of Warcraft video. In this video we are going to be taking a look basically at what are primordial stones, what are the best primordial stones and essentially which ones you should keep an eye out for. So if you haven't uh, understood or if you need to kind of get to this point, I have a great video on the Onyx Annulet as well as also exploring the Yaskara Vaults that you can click in the top right hand corner if you need assistance with getting to the point where you're considering which primordial stones are the best for your Onyx Annulet. If you've got there, then obviously there's a couple of basics we just need to cover. Primordial stones. Uh, are obviously the stones that you socket into your ring and they each come with unique effects. These stones with the same name have the same effects uh, as any other stone of the same name. So no sparkling mana stones are different until you upgrade them. They all have the same effect. You can socket gems into your ring and de-socket them freely. You just have to obviously come to the socketing station and remove them as such. Similarly, to get fragments, you can break your spare stones and turn them into primordial ore fragments, which you can use to upgrade your stones, as well as also buy stones. You can then buy stones from Researcher Inarith, as well as a backup Onyx Annulet, should you need one. To upgrade your stones, you simply need to get Unstable Elementium. Unstable Elementium can be crafted by Jewel Crafters, however, if you cannot craft with a dual crafter then the next best step is just going to be to go to a crafting order station and obviously get yourself some work orders placed or place them within your guild like I do just to help out the guild. Each stone can be upgraded a total of three times and so that kind of covers that. Obviously acquiring your stones is rather important so the easiest way to acquire the stones you want is to buy them from Reach Researcher in Marath. However, which stones are you actually looking to buy? And this is a very, very crucial factor. So we'll look at each family and just go through all the stones that belong to those categories. The Condensed Fire Magic family is the Entropic Fell Stone, Flame Lick Stone, Raging Magma Stone, and Searing Smoky Stone. The Condensed Frost Magic family is the Cold Frost Stone, the Deluging Water Stone, the Exuding Steam Stone, and the Freezing Ice Stone. The Condensed Earth Magic Family is the Gleaming Iron Stone, the Indomitable Earth Stone, and the Shining Obsidian Stone. The Condensed Nature Magic Family is the Echoing Thunder Stone, the Pestilent Plague Stone, Storm Infused Stone, Wild Spirit Stone, and Wind Sculpted Stone. The Condensed Arcane Magic Family is the Harmonic Music Stone, the Humming Arcane Stone, the Obscure Pastel Stone, and the Sparkling Mana Stone. And then the Condensed Shadow Magic Family is the Prophetic Twilight Stone and Swirling Mojo Stone, and the Condensed Necromatic Family is the Desirious Blood Stone and the Necromatic Death Stone. So that kind of runs through the families. I will leave a link in the description. Uh, that should help you to track which stones belong to which of these families. And obviously you want to make sure that you buy into the family that has the stone that you're looking for. It's no guarantee to find it, but it's a lot easier that way. What I've done now is I've just kind of brought out a couple stones that I think are important to reference uh, for players. And I want to also point out the important stones for your spec. And there are some clear top tier stones right now, but please remember that Blizzard could definitely nerf, buff, or change these. And I hope they do, because right now there's a huge trend right at the top uh, for what the best stones are. But we'll start with the Delusion Water Stone, one of the best stones for healers. Uh, abilities have a chance to basically proc a random heal. Similarly, the Wild Spirit Stone also does a similar effect, uh, but with more with a dot heal. Uh, that occurs over time to multiple nearby enemies, or allies, sorry. The Exuding Steam Stone also has a chance to proc heals, however it's dependent on you receiving heals, and this does have some pretty good synergy for some healers with the Desirious Bloodstone. So, those are the three main healer stones. Almost every healer runs at least 
three of those stones, all three water stones or nature stones, plus maybe Desirius instead of the others. Then we have the Prothetic Twilight Stone. This is currently one of the most crucial stones in the endgame, and this is because this stone has the ability to proc basically double of your effects. And right now the way it's working seems to be quite significant. So for any build, which is most, that run two effects, for example the Freezing Ice Stone that deals damage and the Desirious Bloodstone that deals healing, the Prophetic Twilight Stone seems to proc off of both of these. Now the problem is, is the Desirious Bloodstone also does damage. So technically speaking, you're getting 1.5 times damage as well as getting some pretty significant heals. And that's why the Ice Stone and the Desirious Bloodstone are both such crucial stones for the endgame. The Freezing Ice Stone is also crucial due to the fact that its proc condition is off basic damage. This is quite significant because it means it's got a very quite low bar to actually proc. Now we talk about some of the other stones. So Pestilent Plague Stone is actually somewhat useful, especially for Affliction Warlocks, uh, as it will count as a dot. Uh, or an ailment which will increase your damage depending on your talent build. And then we have the Echoing Thunderstone, which is also decent for certain melee classes, just due to the fact that if you're moving around a lot in the fight, it can trigger quite a bit, uh, and basically it gives you some free extra damage. Especially if you're quite a mobile class, but has no casting times, uh, you'll find that quite a lot of you know classes have these. The rest of these stones I want to kind of briefly cover, but a lot of the current tanking stones are not useful and I don't suggest them for tanking. Uh, and the reason being for this is because the tanking stones don't block significantly enough damage. Uh, they don't block nearly enough damage, they block like 20k, 40k, they're like 12 second shields. This is not really a viable option for a lot of classes because it just doesn't carry enough tanking weight uh, across the board. And then you get some other stones like, you know, the Smoky Stone, which realistically is off of interrupts, which is great, but doesn't really have a big place in the meta. And then you also have the Movement Speed Stone, which is also cool, but again, doesn't really have a big place in being a very DPS or heal centric stone. I do expect all of these to get buffed. I hope they buff stones rather than nerf stones. I think that is the best way to go about it. I'm not a fan of, you know, debuffing things or like making things weaker. I'm always a fan of making things stronger. I will leave a link to what your specific best build is for your class in the description below. But honestly, Nine times out of ten, it will use at least one, two, or three of the first f six stones that I mentioned, basically. Like, that's essentially everything that's going to be covered by, you know, those stones, which is why I kind of pointed them out. There are some notable ones, and they come from the Condensed Arcane section, uh, and that is the Humming Stone and the Obscure Pastel Stone. The Humming Arcane Stone... Dealing magic damage has a chance to fire arcane missiles. This is pretty good, and the Obscure Pastel Stone will randomly proc any stone effects, uh, which is somewhat helpful. And then in the Nature Magic section and the Shadow Magic section, uh, you can get some pretty decent ones. The Storm Infused Stone is somewhat decent because it will be able to help you out uh, overall in terms of crit-based builds, as it could increase your AoE damage. But that's really about it. Um, obviously, you know, it can be difficult at times to understand which stone is the best. But essentially, like almost all classes are going to be using the Zerus Bloodstone and Freezing Ice, basically. Like if you don't want to think, just put those two stones into your ring and you've basically done... 90% of all the different spec builds and then prophetic twilight stone and yeah that's basically it that's like your general coverage build but yeah i hope this video helped uh, leave a comment if you have any other queries but i'll see you guys next time and good luck and 
Bye.